Hi there, this is Drake. Today we shall acquaint ourselves with a perplexing case that demands unwavering nerves and will be evaluated with great ambiguity. I leave the conclusions to you, but let us delve directly into the matter at hand. Lacey Fletcher was born on November 25, 1985, to her parents Clay and Sheila Fletcher. She was the only child in a family residing in a small village in the state of Louisiana. This village had no more than 1,000 inhabitants, and its name translates to slaughter, which is quite fitting for the theme of today's story. When Lacey was around nine years old, she moved with her parents to a new home located in a well-to-do residential area on Slater Street. This street culminated in a cul-de-sac with grand houses and beautiful gardens. From an outsider's perspective, it seemed that the world there was much more beautiful, and life must have been happier than elsewhere. The Fletcher family appeared to be a typical middle-class family. Lacey's mother, Sheila, worked as a secretary in the court. Her responsibilities included overseeing all administrative procedures in the court. Lacey's father, Clay, worked for a non-profit organization. The family was devout, attending church every Sunday. Lacey attended a Baptist academy and played on the volleyball team there. Neighbors said that Lacey was no different from other children. She was cheerful, active, and enjoyed socializing with other kids. She appeared as a petite, well-coordinated girl who loved engaging in sports in the garden or running along the street. However, when she was 14 years old, her parents withdrew her from school, and she continued her education at home. By that time, signs of Asperger's syndrome had begun to manifest in Lacey, albeit subtly. And to the untrained eye, Asperger's syndrome is a form of autism characterized by pronounced impairments in social communication and interaction. The intellectual development of those affected is nearly the same as that of a healthy individual. So it is not entirely clear why Lacey was withdrawn from school and placed under homeschooling. Her parents never made any specific statements publicly regarding this matter. Perhaps it was somehow related to Asperger's syndrome and social disorders, but neither the neighbors nor the children noticed anything unusual in Lacey's behavior. A friend and classmate of Lacey later said that they became friends immediately when Lacey was attending school and described her as a very close and dear person. She mentioned that Lacey was often reserved and shy, but at the same time, she could express her opinion clearly in various situations. After Lacey stopped attending school at the age of 14, the connection between the friends was severed, and her classmate hardly heard anything about Lacey anymore. However, on one occasion, she cannot remember who told her, she learned that Lacey regularly visited psychologists during her teenage years, which was somewhat unusual at the time, as most visits to psychologists occurred for serious reasons. A neighbor of the Fletcher family named Robert said in 2022 that he saw Lacey about 15 years ago, when she was just over 20. At that time, the grown-up girl occasionally spent time with his younger brother, as their homes were adjacent. Even then, Robert noticed that she was different from people her age. She simply had different interests. While other girls went to parties, consumed alcohol, or were interested in boys, Lacey preferred to watch Disney movies alone. Overall, after the age of 14, the girl seemed more withdrawn. She ventured outside less and less, stopped attending school, and had almost no friends left. After Lacey essentially stopped communicating with this neighbor's brother, and she was no longer seen, everyone assumed that either the family had moved somewhere else, or Lacey had been sent to study elsewhere. But that was not the case. If someone had known that Lacey had been living in her parents' home all those years, it might have been possible to save her. In May 2017, Robert met with Lacey's father and inquired about the girl's fate, wanting to know how she was doing, if she had moved somewhere, and how her life was unfolding, where she was studying, and what she was studying. But Lacey's father replied that she was fine and still living at home, then quickly changed the subject. This already seemed strange to the neighbor because at that time, the girl should have been in her early 30s and living nearby, even without delving into someone else's life, there was still the opportunity to see how those who lived nearby took out the trash or came and went somewhere. However, no one had seen Lacey all those years, 
and this strange evasion from her father and the neighbor's suspicion remained with him. January 2022, 2.30 a.m., a call was made to the local police station. It was Lacey's mother, Sheila Fletcher, her voice filled with distress, reporting that her daughter had stopped breathing. The police immediately rushed to their home to provide assistance. At the same time, the coroner's office was notified. When the authorities entered the house, they were hit by a repugnant odor, a stench of decay and feces that made it unbearable to breathe the air inside. Later, the coroner would say that throughout his professional career, he had never encountered anything more horrifying than this smell, and for a week, he could not eat properly due to nausea. This man, who had worked as a doctor and coroner for 30 years, had seen various accidents and unfortunate incidents, but what he witnessed in the Fletcher's home shocked and horrified him. The sheriff of the police was also completely bewildered, looking at the scene in the living room where Lacey lay on the couch. At first glance, one could tell that she was around 30 years old, but her appearance was unkempt. That was the initial impression. Upon closer inspection, it was discovered that Lacey weighed only 96 pounds, severely emaciated. She wore only a t-shirt, which was pulled up above her chest. Her eyes were wide open and her hair was completely tangled, resembling a dense woven mat that somehow ended up on her head. And it was impossible to comb her hair. Her entire body was covered in feces, even in her ears, and waste material was found in her eyes and mouth. Bed sores were found all over her body, some of them festering, and some were so deep that they reached the bones. Bed sores typically occur in those who are bedridden due to illness. Lacey's body was marked with brown spots and bed sores, and her buttocks were completely deformed with patches of missing skin. Lacey was infested with insect larvae that lived in various parts of her body, causing unimaginable suffering. The photos taken at that time were never published in the media or on the internet, as they were simply too horrifying and could be traumatizing for people. Even the coroner and the police officers who arrived on the scene had a hard time recovering from what they saw. However, there is a publicly available photograph of the couch on which Lacey died. This piece of furniture was completely destroyed, rotted away, and where Lacey lay, a huge hole formed, in which human remains, pieces of skin, pus, and feces were discovered. Even the wooden floor beneath the couch was covered in all of this and began to rot. During the autopsy, the coroner found remnants of foam from the couch upholstery in Lacey's stomach. Apparently, she was so hungry that she began to eat the couch. The cause of Lacey's death was multifactorial, meaning that her death resulted from a combination of many factors, including the neglected bed sores that required urgent treatment as well as bone inflammation and blood infection. When Lacey was found, her mother Sheila was sitting with her on the couch, crying, and her father Clay looked utterly devastated. Naturally, the investigators had numerous questions about how a person could end up in such a condition. When did neglect begin, and why did the parents who lived in Lacey's home do nothing and allow things to escalate to such an extent? Initially, the girl's parents did not want to publicly comment on the matter. Later. Her mother testified that Lacey had been growing more and more distant from them. And when she turned 20, she simply refused to leave the house. She had no interests. At some point, Lacey refused to get up from the couch, prompting her parents to seek medical help. However, they consulted a doctor without Lacey present as she refused to leave the house. This doctor advised them to take the girl to the hospital, but Lacey did not want to go anywhere and her parents did not know what to do next. Her condition worsened and at some point, Lacey even stopped getting up to use the bathroom. She began relieving herself in a towel that her mother placed near the couch. And sometimes, it happened right in bed. The girl silently and aloofly lay on soiled bedding. Lacey's mother mentioned that she constantly brought her daughter food and drinks and tried to tend to her wounds, which resulted from her constant lying on the couch. Lacey never complained of pain and remained in her right mind until the end. When Lacey suddenly stopped breathing, her mother called emergency services, but it was already too late. There were rumors that it was a neighbor who compelled Lacey's parents to make the call. This neighbor saw Lacey lying motionless through a window and realized that something was amiss. 
He told Lacey's mother to make the call or else he would do it himself. However, the police did not confirm this information later. But as it is known, rumors do not arise out of thin air. They stem from a lack of information. It later became known that Lacey's parents were not at home at all in the days leading up to her death, nearly two days. And during those days, their daughter remained hungry. Of course, it is possible that her mother placed some food on the couch, but still no one cared for her during those days. The question arises, why didn't Lacey get up from the couch? And why didn't she help herself to something to eat considering she was in her right mind? Some sources suggest that the girl suffered from locked-in syndrome, in which a person is fully conscious but almost completely paralyzed physically. Among other causes, this condition is due to damage to the brain. Overall, Lacey lived exclusively on that couch for over 12 years without getting up. In court, the jury members required medical assistance to make sense of the photographs of Lacey's body. When these photos were shown, complete silence filled the courtroom. Everyone present was simply shocked and could not believe what they saw. On May 2, 2022, Clay and Sheila Fletcher were charged with second-degree murder and initially sent to the East Feliciana prison. The parents repeatedly claimed their innocence and emphasized that their daughter Lacey was in her right mind until the end and could make her own decisions. On May 4th, the Fletchers were released on a $300,000 bond. The legal process did not end there. They were tried in February 2023. But it is inconceivable to imagine that parents left their daughter to decompose alive on a couch, doing nothing and taking no action. They even watched television together in the same room in the evenings. That is, the couch on which Lacey lay was in the family's living room. And in the evenings, the parents watched movies while their daughter lay nearby in such a state. It is simply unthinkable, as the stench of feces and decay permeated the entire house and was unbearable. And yet the parents continued to live there and lead a normal life. Lacey looked unwell and her parents continued to behave as if nothing was wrong. There are other horrifying details that have not been made public. People familiar with this story still wonder how such a thing could happen. Was it a cunning process that lasted for 12 years, with Lacey once lying down on the couch, and her condition gradually deteriorated more and more? Of course, her bed sores did not appear yesterday or today. They developed over a prolonged period of time. And let's assume that someone's child declares that they will no longer go to the bathroom. How can one let that go unchecked and dismiss it? And even if Lacey was an adult, there must have been a way to place her in some institution, at the very least, where she could receive help, even if it was forced. Of course, this requires significant financial investment, and it is hard to believe that Lacey's parents did not have the means for such medical care. They had steady jobs and earned a decent income. They had a large house in a good residential area, and it seems they were not drowning in debt as they quickly raised $300,000 for their bail. It is difficult to believe that the parents could not find the means to provide psychological assistance to their daughter. It appears that the girl refused treatment in her early teenage years. But why, and at what point did everything come to a halt? No one can say what was going on in the minds of Lacey's parents or in her own mind. But the fact remains that a healthy person would not willingly spend their life on a couch. That much is clear. Something must have happened in Lacey's mind, and it was difficult or impossible for her parents to reach her. Or perhaps they simply did not want to deal with her. Lacey's parents were initially charged with involuntary manslaughter, but ultimately, the charge was replaced with second-degree murder. Later, the Fletchers, who had been released on bail, were arrested again on June 19th, and a grand jury once again indicted them for murder, according to the district attorney's office. We will ensure justice for Lacey, and the public will know that guardians will be held accountable for negligence or cruel treatment of a person under their care, the prosecutor's statement said. Thank you for watching. I recommend watching other videos on our channel. Like and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet again, 